Ooh. Ooh. All right, had a wonderful night of sleep here inside of Wigwam at Wigwam Village number two in Cave City. But we gotta be getting back on that long, lonesome road. Hey, you all, and good morning. It was an absolute pleasure to be able to come back to the Wigwam Village and have another night's sleep here in a wigwam here in Cave City, Kentucky. But before I leave Cave City, I wanted to uh, kind of take a look at the town and how the town is doing. I always like to check in on things while I'm here, check in on the attractions here in uh, Cave City, so I think we'll be gonna be driving down the road and uh, seeing what's going on in the tourist town of Cave City, Kentucky. Please, follow me. And we have stopped off here for our first stop of the day. We stopped off here at Big Mike's Rock Shop and Mystery House is a classic roadside attraction here in Cave City. One of the mystery houses, I'm always excited to see a mystery house. There's the places in the United States where gravity doesn't make sense, the laws of physics don't apply. So we're gonna head in there and go on a tour through the mystery house. But before we head into the mystery house, we gotta say hi to Big Mo. Of course, there is absolutely no climbing on Big Mo. But Big Mo is this iconic fiberglass Moasaurus that lives outside of Big Mike's rock shop and mystery house. Look at him, this big prehistoric sea beast here. See his big giant sea beast eyes. Of course, no climbing on Big Mo. Don't climb on him because he will uh, he will devour you. See the entrance to the mystery house over here. We've got to head into the uh, main shop to get our tickets. And see they have the wacky slanted windows here. All right, so I purchased my ticket for the mystery house. They said the tour will start in a few minutes. So just kind of looking around the gift shop here. And over here, you can see a sea monster on display. Big Mo, world's largest fossilized Mosaurus skull as seen on Jurassic World. So yeah, let's uh, head up here and see Big Mo. Oh, and there, there he is. There is that giant Moasaurus skull. Like a big, giant sea monster there. Up here we have a model of what Big Mo may have looked like when he was alive. See, he can, uh, see compared to the T-Rex there, he could just gobble up all these other dinosaurs. And check out uh, check out the bald eagle there. Love all these different salt and pepper shaker holders. You get the sea turtle, the elephant, or the skull where you can store the salt and pepper shakers in their eye cavities. Oh look up here. We got a uh, happy little shark. And here behind the candy bars. We have old Pappy there, hanging out with his friend, the uh, carved Native American there. And then also, look at this uh, googly-eyed rock. Look at this mystery fire. It says you toss this into a campfire and it makes the fire all colorful. Now, I never quite understood the concept of sitting around a fire. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but 
I think that would uh, that would enhance things to make the, everything all colorful. I had one of these when I was a kid, a worry stone. You can sit there and just rub the hole in the stone while you worried. I worried a lot as a kid. Uh, yeah, I love these amongst all these other skulls. We have cabbage skull and peanut skull. There's a Kentucky stool sample. Like you would put like your feces in a tube for your doctor, but here it's an actual little wooden stool. Alright, so we're headed into the mystery house here. some optical illusions that, well, you've probably seen before because Mystery House is older than hills. The <laughs> ones that usually catch people's attention right away are this one right here. And on the other side of the room, the fire extinguisher. Oh, Just kidding, yeah. this one right oh, okay. here. So, when you look at these two images, do they appear to be moving? Yeah, 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 they do. Well, they say the more they move when you look at them, the more anxiety you have. Oh, I have lots of that. They go crazy when I look at them, so I'm not sure what that means about me. <laughs> Have you ever seen a movie called The Labyrinth? Yes, with David Bowie. Yes, with David Bowie. Excellent. So you may remember a scene in that movie where uh, David Bowie does that wild flip on the stairs from the room that looks a lot yeah, like this yeah, picture. Yeah. This is the inspiration behind that scene in the movie. As you probably already know, this is a drawing by M.C. Escher. We have a few of his drawings here in this first hallway. Fun fact, people used to be able to walk on walls just like this until gravity was discovered in 1997 really? by Alan Reeves during the film <laughs> The Matrix Trilogy. Oh, okay. It'll be on this end. Yeah. You've probably seen this image before as it's well over 100 years old. Most of us see it for the first time in grade school. There's two faces here, a young lady and an old lady. Can you see them both? I can actually. Which one do you see first? Uh, old lady, I think. See the big old lady mm -hmm. nose there. Yep, and the young lady and her tiny little nose as she looks towards the door. I say if you notice the young lady's face first, that you're young at heart. If you notice the old lady's face first, you're an old soul. Low under black light includes some fingernail polish, highlights in your hair, some high-end tattooing, some dental work, cash money, and even your driver's license. And as you'll see in the case here, we have uh, several rocks and minerals which also fluoresce under black light. Uh, all of these are available on our shop as well. However, not everything in this case is a rock or a mineral. Anything that is this color green is a type of glass that you may be familiar with. Uh, it's known as depression glass or uranium grass. Yeah. Glass, excuse me. Uh, so called that for the radioactive particles in the crystal. Let's play a quick game here. Okay. Not this orange rock, but that piece of uranium glass right above it. Yeah. What color do you think that is under natural light? Uh, I'm going to say... Uh... Uh... uh, uh Purple. Purple? Okay. Well, that's a that's a pretty close guess, actually. It is pink. Oh, okay. Five people this year have guessed correctly that it's pink. I guess that's just the last thing you think of when you see that lime green. Now, you see this uh, orange rock right here is my favorite in the whole case because of how bright it is, but also because of what happens when it's under normal light, which is just oh, like yeah. a regular old rock. It's a boring old rock. Yeah. yeah. Every time I do that, it makes me think of those times when I was a boy. I'd bring home a bunch of cool rocks. My parents made me get rid of them. I might have had something real good. <laughs> just didn't have a black light. <laughs> All right, so I know you're a first timer in here. I, I don't want to ruin any surprises. Okay. But uh, well, let's just say the pa past this point here, it gets a little bit weird. Okay, so okay. heads up. The dinosaurs there. You know what the best part about the outer space room is? What's that? This handrail right here. On a serious note, nine times out of ten, if anybody falls in the mystery house, it happens when they pass through this doorway. Sir, I don't know why so many people bite it right here, but it happens <laughs> enough that I'm going to point out that handrail oh, okay. a second time. Get the handrail there. All right, I'm going to pass off some pool balls okay. to you. And if you want to take those and set them on the trough over here, we'll see what happens. All right, so I'm going to set these on the trough. I'm going to roll uphill. Nice. How are your legs holding up? What's that? How are your legs holding up? You uh, so far so good. Yeah. All right. Nice thing about working in the mystery house, never skip leg day. 
But if you need to have a seat for a second, I've got a good place for him right here. Alright, so all right, so when you sit down, you'll want to scoot all the way back. All the way back. All right. As long as you stay leaning back, right, we go. hold you up. What if I lean forward? Uh, you'll fall forward. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That's pretty cool. Alright, how do I get down? Here, I'll let you. <laughs> Just want to lean forward. Yeah, I get asked every day in here if there's a weight limit in the chair because of how rickety it is. There's no weight limit, but there is a height limit. Is there? Uh, yeah, it's 6'5". Oh, dear. So I've got a good photo opportunity oh, yeah? over here, but it's going to take two of us to really demonstrate. Okay. So, right, so uh, if you've ever seen this on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, you may have seen this room before. Uh, it's called Forest Perspective Illusion. Now, this works best two people at a time standing in opposite back corners. Uh, why don't you start in that corner, and I'll go top corner. You're five nine, and I'm five eight. All right. So you appear to be. All right. I appear to be much smaller than you. Yeah, a little bit. What happens if we trade spots? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Pat you on the head there. <laughs> so which which way do I face? Um, face towards the up down. Alright, here we go. That arm's down, eyes closed. There it is right there. <laughs> Alright, so you felt that I assume? Yeah. Alright, so when you get to the bottom of the three stairs behind me, take a turn around and look back in this room, you'll be able to see the tilt for the first time. Okay. Oh, then. Oh, yeah, and you can see the tilt. <laughs> believe it or not, that's still not as steep as your average roof. Really? Gives you a newfound appreciation for roofers, though. Oh, look at that guy there. Alien hiding in the bushes. If you're still trying to find your land legs down here, <laughs> that's because you're still not on level grounds. The uh, incline varies between 1 and 20 degrees throughout the mystery house. Oh, footprints there. We get lots of requests for this mirror in our gift shop. Uh, seems to be the most popular one. We call this one pre-quarantine. Pre-quarantine. <laughs> Not to be mistaken for our post-quarantine mirror, oh, yeah. but we don't like to talk about that. Yeah, it happened to me, definitely. I'm sucking it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm willing to bet you've seen a movie called Finding Nemo. Yes. I think just about everybody in the world has at this point. Now, to your left, we have these three lovely underwater scenes painted on these panels. Can you find Nemo? Can I find Nemo? Uh, let's see. Is that Nemo there? I think he looks a little bit like Flounder from Little Mermaid. Fla oh, okay. I'm getting my getting my movies uh, my movies crossed. No, I don't see Nemo. You're not seeing him anymore, huh? No. Well, it's because he's not out there. No. <laughs> <laughs> my. Uh, my Record for keeping people at the board looking for Nemo is 25 minutes and pretty proud of what that. <laughs> I've also been told everything under the sun this hallway. Now one of these six portraits is not like the other. Uh, I'm pretty sure you catch on to the concept of these guys real quick. I take issue with this poor gentleman's photo, however. Uh, not out of the six, he didn't end up with fangs or horns or a third eye like the rest of them. He just gets kind of wrinkled in the face. He just gets a little wrinkly? I'd be pissed if I was him. Wrinkles do not a monster make. <laughs> oh yeah, he just kind of gets a little older. <laughs> right? I don't know if that's supposed to be like a tribute to Dorian Gray or, or what, but uh, that's what I go with. <laughs> All right, one step down. I would be remiss if I did not point out the picture to my left before you go. This is hands down. The single biggest mystery in the entire mystery house. Okay. No joke. You see, we have no idea why 23 years ago, somebody decided to sneak a framed picture of a little girl into the mystery house and hang it up when we weren't so looking. So this just appeared overnight? <laughs> Don't know how it got in here. Somebody carried it in on tour, I guess. But uh, it was on that day that the uh, 23 years ago, the tour guide came through and he gets to this point in the hallway, looks up and sees it hanging there for the first time and says, well, that's kind of mysterious. Cool. That, is, that is mysterious. It's been there ever since. I just hope they went to Cracker Barrel next and did the same thing. <laughs> All right, well, we've made it to the end of the mystery house. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, well, there is one mystery left to solve. What's that? We need to figure out how we're getting out of here. Is that maybe... maybe Three doors behind me. Door there. One of door these there. is the correct choice. All right. So which door would you like to take? Uh, let's try door number one. All right, go ahead and come on up and give it a pull. Let's oh see gosh. what's behind it. Just the one. All right, nothing. Okay. 
and uh, that one's got a lock on it. Very good. So it's not door number two. I'm guessing so door number three. Door number three will take us back into the gift shop. Fun fact, I was here for six months before I noticed the exit sign. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thank you. Along. Hope you enjoyed it. Appreciate it. So yeah, whenever in Cave City, don't forget to stop at Big Mike's Mystery House. They do an absolutely wonderful uh, mystery house tour here. Sign says this is JB's Haunted Mansion here. It uh, is not currently open. I don't know if this is a seasonal attraction or maybe, I don't know, maybe it's only open on the weekends, but I've never been in this. I've never seen it open. So uh, let, let me know, has anyone else been by here to JB's Haunted Mansion? Um, also, uh, this area here where this Haunted Mansion sits, this used to be a uh, Bible-themed mini golf course called uh, Golgotha Mini Golf, but uh, now it is home to JB's Haunted Mansion. I'd love to, I'd love to get in there and see, uh, see JB's Haunted Mansion. This here has been a total mystery to me. This is Treasure Trove Park. That's the old uh, Cave City Wax Museum there. It was purchased by an individual named Kentuckiana Jones years ago. And uh, he has been building these smaller museums, all these different museums, a museum on veterans, museum on Rome, the Beatles, American Indians, Egypt, all these different museums here. Now, every time I've come by, and I've generally come by probably in the off season, but this, I've never seen this open, never been able to go inside and uh, check out all these museums. So I didn't know, last time I came by here, I didn't know if it was closed forever or if they're planning on opening this season. Now they're not open, but uh, they do appear to be building onto it. There's a lot of construction going on uh, down that way. So they've expanded out all the way down here. You can actually see the big sign up there now. This is all new. It says Treasure Trove Park, a family fun destination. It says trolley station there. So I don't know if there's gonna be some sort of train. Yeah, it says Treasure Trove Park West Wing. And uh, look at this. They've got this, uh, this uh, monster truck school bus. It's called Higher Education. And then here's some info. Here's some new info. It says, get ready, we're here, watch, listen here, as our opening is near, T TBA 2023, so they will be opening this year. Does not say uh, exactly when. I guess they're still uh, still actively uh, putting the finishing touches on the Treasure Trove Park, but I'm excited. I'd love to get out here and, uh, and uh, check out Treasure Trove Park. You can actually hear there are some saws running. Someone's doing some... Uh, woodwork there on the porch and check this out here there's a giant dragon this is added very recently it says dino dragon ride them cowboy corrals i don't know if kids are able to to ride dinosaurs or dragons this all looks very very interesting i definitely love to come out and see the finished product here you can see people doing some some work right there on the uh on the ride them cowboy corral I did ask one of the workers if uh, if he knew when the park would be opening up. He did say about about a month or so. So I don't know. Maybe we'll uh, have to swing back by Cave City and check out uh, Treasure Trove Park. Definitely wanted to stop by and see what was happening here at Gun Town Mountain. I've been kind of unclear on uh, the future of uh, what is going to happen here. Does, they're not open, and it does not look like they are open yet. So I would hazard to guess they are not opening this season. I know it has uh, changed hands a few times, but um, yeah, I'm not sure what the current owner plans on doing with it. As you can see it's yeah very similar to last time I came by here. Just uh, this main gift shop is pretty empty. No, uh, no real signs of life. Of course, that classic haunted house up there on the hill. Maybe we can walk up there and uh, get a closer look at the haunted house. So yeah, this is not looking great. 
course, you know, the class, it, it, you know, it, it's amazing, the, the exterior here, but uh, it's like a piece, a giant piece of the actual roof has uh, collapsed here in front of the house. Yeah, that makes me really sad. Um, I love this haunted house and I hate to see it deteriorating here. Hopefully someone, uh, someone can get their hands on this and put a little TLC back into it before it's uh, too far gone. Check here on uh, Charmin Charles. He's the uh, the uh, piano or organ player there in the window. Uh, he's looking a little rough. The stuffing in his head is all popped out. Have another animatronic here that's looking pretty uh, pretty rough shape. The entrance here has been been boarded up. Nice to keep hooligans out of the of the haunt yeah it's all been locked up which i guess that's a good that's good at least it's sealed so people can't get inside and destroy the insides unfortunately it does appear that uh the outsides are are taking a beating from the elements now this here the uh, chairlift takes you to a wild west village up on top of the mountain and this has kind of been the downfall of uh, of Guntown Mountain when it was purchased by uh, Will Russell and turned into Funtown Mountain, the inspector shut down uh, the chairlift. And I know uh, owners after that had tried to get the chairlift operational, but it's a very old, very old chairlift. It would definitely require a lot of money to get it working. So that's kind of restricted access to the um, to the Wild West Village up there, which has really made it difficult to reopen the park. Now you can see the remnants of Funtown Mountain there. When Will Russell purchased it, turned it into Funtown Mountain. Looks, he replaced the, the uh, G with an F, I think because he did not like the connotation of firearms. And uh, it actually was turned back into Guntown Mountain after that after the brief two month period where it was uh, Funtown Mountain. Looks like someone has improvised a G there, tried to spray paint a G. I guess it's a battle whether or not this will be Guntown or Funtown. Let's uh, just peek back in here real quick. Yeah, here's the old chairlift mechanism in here. This is where you would uh, board the chairlift. I actually did get a chance to ride this chairlift was before I even made videos. I rode up to the top on the chairlift. Here's some of the chairlifts right here, actually left behind. As you can see, it's they're very. <laughs> these are not necessarily heavy-duty chairlifts. See, it's like a plastic seat, and the little tiny, little tiny uh, safety bars there. Yeah, I felt you know it was, it was uh, definitely an experience riding, uh, riding that. Although we can't take a look at uh, the upper section of Guntown. You can see the map here of the Wild West Town. It's the Yellow Dog Saloon. They would have gunfights in the streets. Occasionally they do a hanging, <laughs> which is pretty intense. But yeah, I hope someday, I, I, you know, fingers crossed, someday I hope we can get back up there and see uh, either, either Guntown or Funtown Mountain make a return. The one thing that remains though, that big shiny ham stays there overlooking the city of Cave City. We actually covered a lot of what happened with Guntown Mountain on my channel in real time. Uh, now Guntown Mountain, you know, it, it, it closed down. It was purchased by an uh, individual named Will Russell, the founder of Lebowski Fest. And in the process of changing it to Funtown Mountain, after he purchased it, he had a very serious mental health issue and ended up destroying a lot of the property while, uh, while suffering mental health uh, issues. And this actually, you can see the yellow paint here was splattered by him. He was kind of, you know, it kind of destroyed a lot 
of the things that he had up here at Guntown Mountain while uh, while going through this episode. But you can still see that yellow paint still staining uh, the parking lot here. Stopped off here at Raven's Cross Haunted Village. Now they actually do a haunted house here during the haunt season, but it looks like they have a year round uh, store here as well. You can see the dragon there chained up in front. And then over here, this used to be in front of the, uh, the uh, Mammoth Cave Wax Museum that was next door. It's like a little children's ride. Yeah, it's like, just peeking there. It has you know, like a screen there. I'm not sure what kind of ride or game this was exactly, but yeah, that used to be over uh, over there next door at the Wax Museum. But uh, yeah, let's check out uh, Raven's Cross. What the Hello. Hell? Hey. All right, we're gonna get a little sneak peek here of uh, upcoming addition, creating a toy museum up upstairs here. Oh yeah. Okay, so this is gonna be the 1966 Bat Cave there. And there's gonna be lots of interactive stuff, so you actually have to solve puzzles to see certain um, dioramas. Oh, that's really so cool. So this one you'll have to solve like a few puzzles to get the lights on in there and all that. Cool stuff. Got the rotating platform there. Oh, okay. Which uh, is this a different version of the Bat Cave? Yeah, that's Michael Keaton's. The Michael Keaton Bat Cave. Awesome. I see the scene there. It's the uh, birthday cake, but it was where the Joker would sit and throw the dollars out to the city. Oh, this is all very, very cool. Oh, look at that. We got the, the uh, Arkham Asylum there. Got the nurse, Joker. There's King Shark. He's got Batman's cowl in his hands. With the different, different uh, Batman there. I think that's Batfleck. Oh, that's the Cesar Romero Joker. Can you see his, can you see his mustache there? Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit? Yeah. This is a Iron Man. Oh, he's got the different heads there. Oh yeah, that looks like uh, Robert Downey Jr. There we got a Spider-Man there. Oh yeah, look at all the different different hands he comes with. He can do different poses. So this is the storm here. This is like a uh, VR roller coaster. Yes. Oh, that's yeah, really cool. And then, back here is the cube. Oh yeah, I remember seeing this at IAPA. Yeah. Shooting game in there. All right, we're gonna give the cube a try here. Yeah, that's my, all right, let's do, uh, let's do the carnival. Oh geez. We're getting on the, we're getting on the roller coaster here. Oh jeez! Oh my god! <laughs> oh wait, wait, going up, up the roller coaster here. Oh jeez! Oh, seat, seat moves. Oh my god! Oh, we landed on the Ferris wheel. <laughs> we're on the swell, we're on the swings. We're gonna fight these guys while we're swinging. Okay, no, no bumper cars. Oh! Alright, so I think we're gonna give this a whirl too. She put on the VR helmet, and it's kind of like a roller coaster uh, in VR. Take hat and glasses off to, to 
experience the VR. coaster there's things happening there's like things falling on the track it's very easy you can look around you can see everything so it's just like being on a regular roller coaster almost more fun though because you know that you're not going to be killed for real I guess technically you're not normally gonna be killed on a roller coaster but still yeah it's really fun I would say this is like training it's like training for roller coasters if you're terrified to get on a roller coaster this might be a good place to start they have their escape rooms here this is the final chapter here. Oh, I got a very spooky cavern in here. So this is the Nautilus incident, kind of a ocean themed escape room here. Some different artifacts there in the cabinets. Oh yeah, this is really cool. I think that's the fact. Is that uh, Captain Captain Nemo there? The control panel in here. See the fishes outside of the window. Got the scuba suit locked up there. Oh, and look at that stained glass in a submarine is an interesting choice. It's got the crack in there on the uh, on the stained glass. All right, we're gonna take a sneak peek here at the haunt. Look at these ghoulish children here in the window. Oh boy. There's just <laughs> bodies laying everywhere. I see that. Oh my goodness. All right, some more torture victims here. <laughs> yeah. This is our blacksmith shop. I got the blacksmith shop there. Super spooky skeletons. Murder tools. This was our dentist office. The dental office, using mm -hmm. the pliers there. Yep. And then this is about as far as we can go, and this is our apothecary. Okay, so we got the apothecary in here. Oh yeah, just look at all the different bottles and details here. Doing a little autopsy there. Here we got some Walking Dead zombie busts. This one's got an arrow in the head. This one's got a screwdriver through the eye. A little Sasquatch section here. These are posable, posable Sasquatches. Their Sasquatch says, please buy my crap. <laughs> Different uh, Sasquatch figures. Oh, there's a Funny Bone Sasquatch. That's pretty cool. I've collected some of these. Here, it looks like they have their own uh, brand of wine here, Muscadine, oh that's cider, Muscadine Grape Cider, Raven's, Raven's Cross. Yeah, massive collection of toys and collectibles here. Oh, look at these uh, Haunted Mansion glasses where they're tipping to the side in the direction that they're hitchhiking. Yeah, I love this uh, Edgar Allan Poe here with the raven on his shoulder old hotel key fobs here much like the one I had at the uh, wigwam village Let's see if I recognize there's hotel California that's an Eagles song the Raven Tavern in Baltimore now there's the the love shack in uh, Bogart Georgia that the uh, b-52 sung about that's Smith's Grove sanitarium in Haddonfield Illinois from Halloween and uh, Pennywise daycare it's like a it's like a great place to send your kids. And there's the there's a lickety splits from uh, from Ozark. 
always love to see these the the boglins had one of these as a kid and then uh they came out with new ones the guy the guy that made them had a kickstarter and uh put out some new boglins i've not seen this one before i think that might be a a new design i had this one here the the jack-o-lantern faced one and we have the crazy clown here it looks a little bit like uh john wayne gacy and what's this a bat a bat boglin there His name is drax so thank you for joining me here today in cave city i love cave city i love I love the, the the tourism here you know some of the things in cave city has cut closed over the years but i think it's really encouraging to seeing new things growing and expanding in uh in cave city actually speaking with the uh the owners of uh raven's cross I uh, learned that apparently uh, Guntown Mountain has been purchased, and um, so that that should it should open again in some form. Apparently, um, some an action park, you know, parked with you know, zip lines and that sort of thing, has purchased that property. So we may see some zip lines or or things like that. But hopefully, they will uh, keep some of the original charm that makes uh, Guntown Mountain what it is. And I'd love to see the growth. At, uh, at at uh, Ravens Cross, you can see uh, them adding new things, some some fun things there. The the new uh, the new uh, toy museum. They're explaining their uh, you know they're gonna have these giant tableaus with these super realistic toys, and uh, they're gonna have Batman, uh, Marvel, and then or I'm sorry, DC, Marvel, and then a horror section. I'm really excited to see the uh, the horror section. Of course, I'll definitely be coming back to see that. And then Treasure Trove Park, this this giant sprawling complex. Uh, but there's a, the, the, that giant dragon they added really uh, got me excited. So excited to see that. So maybe some new life being breathed into uh, the wonder wonderful Cave City. We had the Wigwam Village purchased by new owners. I don't know. I'm starting to feel like. We're having a bit of a cave city renaissance here, which makes me very excited. But uh, they actually gifted me, very generously gifted me some of this uh, muscadine grape juice from Raven's Cross. This is non-alcoholic grape juice. Yeah, if you were to give it a try here. Mmm, that is so good. Well, that reminds me of like the, um, the grapes my grandma used to grow in her garden. A wonderful grape taste. Not like the grapes at the grocery store, like the grapes with like the thick skin that you have to like chew on. Oh, I love that taste. That is so good. Very, very good. But again, as always, thank you guys for joining me on these adventures. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country, I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun stuff. If you'd like to support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. Three dollars more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. We've got four brand new Carpet Bagger Monster Face pins. You can buy all four for a discounted price or just pick out your favorite one. And uh, also doing cameos, personalized messages, greetings. I uh, just did a bunch for Father's Day. Um, it's a lot of fun, enjoy doing it. So if you're interested in receiving a personalized video message from me, check out that in the description of this video. And of course, all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Till next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.